U.S. President Joe Biden has been greeted by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak after landing in Belfast for a visit to Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. His visit is to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, a peace deal which helped end 30 years of violent conflict in Northern Ireland. The White House says the trip will mark the tremendous progress since that landmark agreement. During his four-day visit, Biden is also set to meet the Irish President Michael D. Higgins and to visit County Mayo, where he has ancestral ties. Biden will also deliver an address in County Mayo to celebrate the deep, historic ties that link our countries and people. President Biden's motorcade has arrived at the Grand Central Hotel in central Belfast for the night. Crowds lined the final stretch of the route, with the president's car taken down a side street before he entered the hotel. They'll be hearing from Kerry Patterson who was born moments after the Good Friday Agreement was signed in 1998, making her the first peace baby. Now 25 years old, Kerry grew up in the shadow of the agreement her whole life, both in Lisbon, Northern Ireland, where she's originally from and in Dublin, Ireland, where she lives now. She tells BBC Newsnight the peace agreement changed the lives of her generation for the better. Her middle name, Hope, stemming from the hope her parents felt for Northern Ireland's future generations. Tony Blair, who was then the UK Prime Minister, was one signatory, and earlier described Biden's visit as significant. He also urged the American leader to tread carefully when dealing with the Democratic Unionist Party, DUP. It's currently boycotting one of the key principles of the agreement, power sharing between Northern Ireland's different parties. Speaking earlier today, Blair said it was important to influence rather than pressurize unionists. One thing I learned about the unionists is if you try to pressurize them to do anything they're fundamentally in disagreement with, it's usually futile pressure, he said. On the final day of his trip, the president will make his way west of the island to reconnect with his ancestors in County Mayo. He will visit the Sanctuary of Our Lady of Knock, a pilgrimage site for many Catholics. He will then visit the North Mayo Heritage and Genealogical Center's Family History Research Unit. Mr. Biden will conclude his trip by making a speech at St. Myrdaka's Cathedral in Ballina. It is said his great-great-great-grandfather, Edward Blewett, sold bricks to the cathedral in 1827, which helped him afford to emigrate to the United States. Thursday will focus on diplomacy and politics rather than ancestry for President Biden. He will meet Irish President Michael D. Higgins at Aris and Yoachterain in Dublin where he, like other dignitaries before him, will plant a tree and ring the peace bell. For the second time in a month, the president will then meet Tawasich, Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar before addressing Dale Aaron, the lower house of Irish Parliament. He will join the likes of John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton to become the fourth U.S. president to address elected representatives there. To round off his day in the Republic of Ireland capital, the president will be whisked away to Dublin Castle for a banquet dinner in his honor. Joe Biden will begin his first full day of his foreign trip in Belfast tomorrow. The president is due to meet Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for bilateral talks before a short trip to open Ulster University's new £350 million campus where he will give an address. Biden and his entourage will then travel south of the border for a packed three days of engagements. The visit has been described by the White House as a personal one for the president, who often praises his Irish ancestry. After flying to Dublin Airport, Mr. Biden will travel north again to visit the picturesque coastal town of Carlingford, County Louth where he will tour Carlingford Castle. Mr. Biden's great-grandfather Owen Finnegan left the county for the U.S. in the 1840s. Mark, Emily, Chloe and Jessica from Airdrie in Scotland have got their big coats on for the arrival of President Biden. They say they want to tell their school friends they saw the American leader. Little James was in his pajamas until about 10 minutes ago when his mum and dad spotted the news about President Biden landing in Belfast. We thought it would be awful if we missed it. If not now, then down the line. The chance to be so close to a US president, they tell me. A crowd has braved the Belfast weather to wait for the arrival of President Biden in Bedford Street. For the best part of a year at least, the prospect of this presidential visit has been discussed among diplomats. Washington's deep pride, seeing itself as a midwife to the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, ensured this date was penciled into the White House diary long ago. But amid the reminiscing about 1998, the politics of 2023 swirls, stirring a loose idea into an actual visit and then molding its scale, or lack of it. The Prime Minister's diplomatic triumph in recasting the Brexit deal for Northern Ireland has not yet at least delivered its most sought after domestic prize, the restoration of power-sharing devolved government in Belfast, 
that cornerstone of the peace deal, 25 years ago. And so an awkward, if frequent political impasse here hangs over this blink and you'll miss it visit from both the president and prime minister. It's caused tensions between Northern Ireland's political parties, leaving the Northern Ireland Assembly at Stormont unable to function since February 2022. The Democratic Unionist Party, DUP, has refused to take part in the power-sharing arrangements under which the Assembly operates. That's a protest against post-Brexit trade rules agreed between the UK and the EU. A new deal has recently been proposed which aims to significantly reduce post-Brexit trade issues for Northern Ireland, called the Windsor Framework. But the DUP believes this cuts Northern Ireland off from the rest of the UK. No formal group talks with NI parties, White House. A short time ago, we heard from the White House that there will be no formal group meeting between US President Joe Biden and Northern Ireland's five main political parties. Biden's visit is overshadowed by the fact Northern Ireland's power-sharing government is not functioning. It collapsed last year when the Democratic Unionist Party, DUP, one of the biggest parties at Stormont, pulled out as part of a protest against post-Brexit trade rules for Northern Ireland, more on that later. Biden will have an opportunity to engage with the leaders of the parties ahead of a speech at Ulster University on Wednesday, but the White House's comments clarify that this will not be as a formal grouping. Sunak greets Biden on the tarmac. Due to the adverse weather conditions in Belfast it has been tricky to get you clear and close-up images. But, here is one which has just come to us showing US President Joe Biden chatting with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. It's cool to say you've seen the US President. Claire Noble. Reporting from Belfast. Also at the security cordon here in Belfast is Isabella, from Toronto, who's a student at Queen's University Belfast. I think it's pretty cool to say you've seen the US President, she says. Speaking at the security cordon, Robert from Portadown says he's waiting to catch a glimpse of the U.S. leader tonight in Belfast. I studied politics at university, and I hugely admire President Biden. He gives me some hope. The U.S. president has met with a small delegation at the dark and damp Belfast airport, and he has now set off in his official presidential car. We expect his journey to his hotel to take roughly 30 minutes. This was a fleeting glimpse of the U.S. president tonight before he has a fuller day of engagements tomorrow. And here's a slightly better view of Biden with other U.S. delegates speaking to the welcome party on the airport tarmac. We're now seeing U.S. President Joe Biden step off the plane, British PM Rishi Sunak is awaiting him at the bottom of the steps alongside other official personnel. Biden shakes hands with Sunak, but our view is obscured by the president's car. Biden arrives in Belfast. In the last few moments, Air Force One has touched down in Belfast. We're now expecting U.S. President Joe Biden to be met by Rishi Sunak. You can click the play button at the top of this page to follow our coverage.